And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a newcomer to the temple, coming to us all the way from Linyat Games. And, devel and developers of the upcoming Pass of Savage Gods um, applic application and companion for D and D fifth edition campaigns. The one and o the one and only Michael Freed. How are you doing today, man? Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, how about you? I'm do I'm doing good. I'm in my natural habitat, which is apparently too cold to live for mo for most civilized people. <laughs> And uh, and I am I am making sh I'm making sure that my dice are appropriately blessed, because because the last thing anyone wants is cursed dice. So I hope you have a high roll on religion. <laughs> I'm a high monk. Bonus. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um. So it's a bit of a tradition to open with the humble beginnings, in a sense. So, mm -hmm. walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games, and what was it that made it stick with you? Well, my first introduction was um, my my friends, uh, uh, even this one that started our company. Mm -hmm. um, he started playing with some friends, and we uh, first, yeah, we are all kind of uh, World of Warcraft players and Warcraft players, and yeah, and then we tried this uh, out, and it was. Uh, pretty amazing. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty new. Like I, um, I've done my first session uh, one year ago, maybe a little more. Um, yeah. So we we started playing every two or three weeks, and uh, our um, founder and uh, leader and uh, first CEO of Lineage Games, uh, he was our first dungeon master. He, yeah. Uh, led us through like 10 or 20 sessions and after that uh, another friend of ours um, who's also a friend of Lunyat uh, uh, also uh, known as Lauren mm -hmm. and uh, also a friend of mine um, yeah uh, so there was this other friend and he was our second dungeon master and yeah he did the last sessions and yeah it's, it's really pretty cool I started like and yeah it's it's awesome and i love it and yeah so that's my experience and how i got into the whole um, pen and paper role-playing thing mm -hmm. so would it be would it be fair to say that your um your rpg experience large was largely rooted with um fan with fantasy gaming and in general and dungeons and dragons specifically um yeah i think so all right now, that br that of course brings me to um, passive passive savage gods. Now, mm -hmm. first th the first thing that I do want the first thing that I do want to ask is now we'll get now the setup that you have th with this is that this is a D this is a DM to this is a, a DM tool to help um, dungeon masters when it comes to setting up worlds and um, adventures. Yes. Um, so, yeah. how did how did where did the idea for, for doing this come from? Well, um, at first um, we had this uh, idea that we wanted uh, Amazon Alexa um, as a dungeon master, and thought, hey, how cool would it be if we, we uh, just let Alexa do the stuff, do the work, and uh, yeah, she prepares everything, and uh, you can just talk with her, and she's the dungeon master but it turned out that it's uh, very very uh, difficult and also we um, applied for a funding in Bavaria where we uh, located and uh, it was declined because it yeah was too new and uh, too risky to do a game uh, only played with Alexa uh, especially um, with this yeah uh, role playing setting um, so we decided to do a, a project that will um, yeah lead us uh, to this Alexa thing. And so we uh, came to the idea of Paths of Sage Gods, with, which will 
um, procedurally generate uh, adventures um, that can be yeah played or um, kind of managed uh, with this tool. So yeah, the part was the biggest part was this uh, procedurally generation, and um, yeah, that's how we came to the idea on the and the concept of path of search gods. It was like um, June or um, how it's called May of uh, 2020 mm. when he had the idea. Now, I am curious about the name. Was that the was did the name come from a a um, campaign that you had run previously? Um, the name came. Uh, uh, Lauren, our, our founder, uh, wanted to name the Alexa game Savage Gods, and uh, he already uh, claimed the rights of the, to this name. And uh, yeah, it's all set up. We have the uh, rights of this name in uh, Europe uh, at least, and uh, that's why we, um, yeah, why why the name ended up being Paths of Savage Gods because we wanted to stick to the original name and maybe uh, even get something like the Warcraft lore running. And uh, yeah, it uh, also it was more like a, a own game we first tried to develop. Uh, so with uh, kind of a, a, a own rule set. So yeah, at first we wanted uh, to yeah do own rules for Paths of Savage Gods. Mm -hmm. And that's why, uh, yeah. It's quite a long name and quite a yeah more standalone game name than a tool name. Yeah. And yeah, and the thing of the with the paths uh, kind of comes from Pathfinder because we wanted the name sound like familiar familiar to uh, role playing gamers. Mm -hmm. So that's why the the thing with the paths is in there and the savage gods. Um, I, I did not know in this point that there's savage worlds uh, out there. Yeah. There, but uh, yeah, it kind of yeah combines paths, paths, Pathfinder and Savage Gods, Savage Worlds. So yeah, it kind of sticks to the genre, I guess, and mm -hmm. that's pretty okay. Now that's why in the in the um, Kickstarter page, it it talks about how it talks about players yearning for the open world experience, open world experience, and mm -hmm. something that I was curious about when it came to that phrasing specifically is. What when, when um you when you were kind of getting your feet wet with um role playing and DMing, did you and did you end up doing any sort of hex crawling? Hex crawling? Oh, um, I'm sorry, I don't know this word in English. <laughs> um, I, I just I, hex scrolling. Yeah, H E X C, um, then just crawl. Um. Obviously, I added the ing, the ing there, but a hex crawl is a um, diff is a subtype of um, adventure that's meant to be more of a meant to be more of a sandbox with a large mm -hmm. with a large region map that's divided into um, different hexes. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Um. When it comes to the open world, I can. Mm -hmm. Just talk about this one. Um, you know, Pastor Sage Gods will create a world uh, out of tiles. So you have this isometric uh, styled mm -hmm. uh, 2D tiles. Uh, so like Age of Empires or something, the Age of Empires 2. Um, you know, this isometric fake uh, 3D style. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, this whole world is made of this tiles. Just imagine kind of a Minecraft world. Uh, but it's not uh, whole square blocks. It is uh, half of uh, a square block, uh, which is one tile. And uh, but you can also imagine that it uh, also generates tiles that are below, uh, yeah, the the first year, uh, 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 how it's called, layers uh, of the, yeah, of the digital board that is created. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, at one uh, one point you have this. Uh, Extremely large map, you know, sixteen thousand uh, uh, to to sixteen thousand tiles, mm -hmm. and in the height it's uh, sixty four tiles. Um, so it's pretty pretty uh, much that is gener generated pro procedurally, and of course uh, after the map is generated, it it is filled uh, with encounters, trees, buildings, and everything you need. So uh, that's the point where uh, when it comes to the open world feeling of Passage Gods. And the other thing is uh, with dungeons, um, 
they are integrated in this map. So like in Minecraft, you don't uh, need to open a new uh, dungeon and uh, cave map or something. Uh, you just have a function where you can yeah, go a little bit down on the layer switch, uh, which uh, allows to uh, turn the visibility do uh, down of the first layers uh, of the layers that are on the top, the mm -hmm. above layers, um, so that you can look into the ground. Um, and there are uh, over also get generated, like in Minecraft, uh, huge cavern systems and also dungeons and other stuff. That's uh, kind of the plan uh, plan for a tool and how open world uh, or uh, how it's called how the open world yeah kind of feels when you uh, will use it. I hope you get got me right. Yeah. And uh, also, I hope I answered your question because yeah, um, it's uh, I'm I'm do, do, uh, doing a little hard uh, with some words when I uh, hear your. Uh, sentences and yeah. questions <laughs> now the, that bring that brings me to this to the subject of um con, of control because you mentioned mm -hmm. you mentioned procedural generation but yep and when and i do want to i do want to make clear the idea of procedurally generated maps is something that's been dip, that's been dipped into before i th i think one of the most famous um generators in that regard was has been um dungeon for almost 20 years mm -hmm. but within those there are certain parameters that you can put in so that it's not total um random there there mm -hmm. are there are levels of control that can be put in and with paths is they're going to be sim they're going to be similar levels of control if somebody wants more water less water more um mm -hmm. topography le less topography that kind of thing when it comes to the um Physical, yeah, yeah. When it comes to the uh, physical layout of the map, um, putting aside yes. villages. Yes, of course. Um, uh, we want every uh, uh, values and var variables uh, we have um, that can be edited uh, will be able to be edited before you create your adventure. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, manage uh, options or uh, how it's called uh, options like, yeah, world size or um, yeah, uh, how much. Dungeons uh, are in there. The water. I, I don't know if uh, it will be the water uh, specifically, but um, yeah, if it's kind of uh, more on the uh, uh, island or is if it's uh, just uh, within the country and stuff like this. Um, yeah, you're pretty open with all the options you have with our tool. So yes, there will be many parameters that can be changed in the main menu before you generate and of course if you don't like the map you can just uh, generate a new one and yeah try this one until you have one with the settings and parameters you choose um that you like now when it comes to wandering monsters in maps which is mm -hmm. which has been one of those things that's been, that's been a staple for the longest time um will are there going are there going to be controls onto that so that somebody um, doesn't uh, doesn't wa doesn't wander off and end up dealing with a monster that that it, that has no ri that has no place in that particular environment? Um, well, um, as I said, um, you know, the the things are generated, and of course, the dungeon master is supposed to prepare his adventure after he generated uh, his map, so um, he kind of must think of. Uh, yeah, is uh, uh, is this uh, yeah kind of the way I want my players uh, to lead, and is is the map okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, so he just can delete monsters. He can add new monsters. And uh, when a player wanders off, um, yeah, uh, the dungeon master yeah is open to uh, add new monsters on the fly. So like, like um, your player moves uh, fifty. Uh, uh, blocks in the f uh, wrong direction, 50 tiles, and uh, the dungeon master says, hey, yeah, there's uh, a huge uh, 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 number of uh, wolves uh, in the forest, so you encounter those wolves right now, and yeah, the player yeah, mm -hmm. can <laughs> has not a choice to run or not to run, uh, kind of. Uh, you know what I mean, uh, I hope. Yeah. Um, you're completely open uh, with that, um, but of course, uh, I... I I just wonder because you said the wandering thing. Um, players wandering is no problem, but of course there will be no monsters uh, that are wandering uh, 
automatically. So they just wonder if the dungeon master moves them on the map. You can imagine Pastor Search Gods is like a giant, a huge digital tabletop um, board um, that is yeah created of those little tiles, mm -hmm. which you can all display, but you also can all edit those tiles. You can delete those tiles and uh, stuff like this. And um, yeah, it's just this huge board and of course, you need to manage it manually with your uh, editor functions, with your uh, yeah, drag and drop characters, drag and drop the trees, um, delete tiles, add new tiles uh, of the tiles atlas, tiles atlas uh, that we prepare and stuff like this. Um, yeah, that's kind of how it works. So of course, no automatically um, movement will be involved or programmed. It is uh, yeah, like a huge editor which you can make available for your players as well. So that they can join into it and have the view on their own uh, devices if they want, but it's not uh, necessary if you don't want to. It's also like like you buy a campaign book for Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. You can just uh, use Puzzle Search Gods to create the content of your adventure, and then uh, you don't need to show the people where they are, but you can manage it in your tool and tell them like with any other campaign book where where you are, and maybe print some part of the map out, uh, laid on the table for the players, and that's it. So you're completely free how you want to use this tool. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'm i I'm aware of that. Now, when it comes to quests, because um, mm -hmm. I know I know that part, part of what you guys are going for is procedurally generating um, cer certain quests. Um, mm -hmm. how, what it, how, it, what exactly is that going to... An, exactly going to entail because there's a there's a multiple of ways that I can see that going mm -hmm. so I'm cur I'm curious what the formatting of that is go is going is planned to look like well for the first version we just need to do this pretty uh yeah how it's called uh, yeah simple simple quests so you have this quest editor um which uh will automatically um be filled with procedurally generated quests when you start your adventure. Like uh, you also can, of course, uh, edit parameters before you create the uh, adventure and uh, yeah, do options what you want to play. And yeah, and then there will be uh, like uh, the people, the no player characters, the NPCs mm -hmm. that uh, can start quests, or maybe it's something completely different. Maybe it's just a certain location or ladder in uh, uh, or something. And uh, the dungeon master will see where this quest is supposed to start. Mm -hmm. And then um, maybe a, a little bit of information uh, about what is maybe need to be prepared. Uh, and then, of course, the main information how to finish this quest. For example, the letter says, uh, talk to the king, and uh, there, uh, uh, yeah, and you can see where the king is uh, mm -hmm. as a dungeon master. And then you have the, the quest of the king uh, that tells the people, yeah, help us uh, uh, and get rid of uh, this dragon that uh, attacks our village, whatever. Um, or giants or uh, the ogres that, um, yeah, settled uh, on the other side of this mountain. And mm -hmm. yeah. Get rid of this threat for us, uh, or something like this. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's basically how we want this quest to, um, yeah, be created. So, pretty simple. It's just for the dungeon master that he knows where can he start and uh, where uh, will the player go, players go. But yeah, it's kind of not filled with any tales or story elements. Uh, it's planned that we do uh, more and more hints uh, for stories as well when the tool uh, grows, uh, grows and uh, will be updated. But I think for the first version, we must stick to the simple quest editor because, of course, people and the dungeon masters want to be as free as possible. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so of course, you just can delete those quests you want to ignore, or you can just change, of course, the dragon that's needed to be killed for the quest. Uh, to be a um, giant or something or whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, so you can make simple ad adjustments, you can delete quests, and you can add new ones. And of course, you can have those main quests, which will be marked for the for the for uh, of the tool to be uh, suggested as main quests. And then you have the side quests editor, where you just can make simple um, 
their side quests for uh, that that are yeah not that important you know uh, every role player knows what i mean mm -hmm. with that i think with side quests yeah i uh, think <laughs> yeah now when it comes when it comes to the when it comes to the character the character overview cuz i'm looking at the um the concept version of the of the UI, which I'm a, I'm aware mm -hmm. is just a um, proof of concept. It's not the final. It's not going to be the final look of the interface. Yeah. But I see a, I see a lot of um a lot of a lot of material that's definitely on the familiar end, and then I get to um the inf the information when it comes to mm -hmm. bestiary and item databases. Now. Yeah. Something that something that I'm curious about because I house rule the hell out of my games and a lot I think <laughs> a lot of people do is how stringent um, some someone using this would have to be to the to the um, rule set in the o, in the OGL. Um, not a bit. Uh, if you don't want to use the rule set of the OGL, you don't need to do it. Um, of course, we need some. Thing uh, we want, uh, let me start again. We want to make it as easy as possible for the dungeon master to manage his adventure. So, when it comes to looking something up, um, we just want to uh, him to click on the bestiary. Mm -hmm. For first, they will just maybe open the link in his normal browser, um, and um, he can find it there. Because we link our content to World Anvil, which has an API, uh, so we can. Like the data we use in our tool, like creatures and stuff like this, to um, uh, yeah, content we created on World Anvil. So you don't need to subscribe to World Anvil or s uh, anything else. But uh, uh, if you want, you can create an, uh, a free account in World Anvil and uh, yeah, manage this content over there. And this content of World Anvil will be uh, yeah, which with the API you can see it in the tool. So if you click on a creature. The content on for from World of Anvil will be appeared in the tool, uh, like like when you um, select a unit in uh, in a real time strategy game, mm. you have those uh, uh, values of the creature right, yeah, on some point on the on the screen, and you don't need to look them up, uh, of course. But if you don't want to use those uh, values, uh, we prepared with the OGL. Uh, you maybe can edit those values in World Anvil, uh, and uh, yeah, maybe even just write it like a normal text, uh, like, a, like a normal a note for mm -hmm. this creature, so that only the note appears, and you can uh, shape it like you want. All right, I can I can get that. It's ma the main the main thing that I was that I was curious about with this sort of thing is is pe is the possibility that somebody might want to put in custom monsters or or um, items within that within their particular um, adventures, and but since you mentioned war, since you mentioned um, a connection with World Anvil, that yeah. kind that yeah. kind of answers uh, that. First, uh, later we want. Mm -hmm. Um. Now, when you're, it you're lagging a bit, I don't know. Oh, yeah. So okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that, folks. Dis Discord had a um, derp moment. Um, yeah, it's okay again. Now uh, you're fluent. What now? Um, the next thing I what next thing I wanted to ask is on the is on um, tiled, the map mm -hmm. the map at the tool that you guys are that you guys are building past the Savage Gods on. What can what can you tell me about? About tiled and how customizable it is for mo for mod support. Um, well, uh, I must excuse uh, there because I am the marketing guy, and uh, yeah, Lunyard, our main developer and founder, uh, could not join me. So I uh, I must excuse that I'm not uh, prepared for. Um, technical questions, but I can give you that um, the tiled editor is a standalone tool, which is free, and I think you can download it on their own um, world tile editor uh, website. And um, yeah, it just can open maps and uh, uh, wait, wait. Um, 
you, you can use the tiles we prepared uh, to uh, which which will be used by the procedural generator for, uh, for f f of past search goals. Uh, those tiles you can you uh, import in tiled and then add uh, uh, create complete own maps in there. Um, you just need to do some settings and then you can uh, create those maps there. And after that, you can uh, open them in our tool, which already works, which we already uh, yeah uh, are running, which yeah you know implemented in the tool already. Mm -hmm. So that's one point uh, how you can uh, edit own maps and create own ma own maps. But uh, when it comes to mod support, so writing own scripts and stuff, I don't know how this works with Tart. Uh Does does a question for um, Lauren for? Luniat, I'm sorry. No so, no I, worries, hope, man. I hope I just got uh, some of your, the information. Yeah. But yeah, Tald is pretty cool. So. And when it comes when it comes to when it, now I, I realize that I realize that this is playing long playing long ball with the situation. But when it comes to when it comes to mod support, are you planning on are you planning on um, on ho on hosting mods on the on a separate site or so, or hosting them on, say, GitHub or or something like that. Um, yeah, we are pretty uh, much using GitHub for very many things. So uh, yeah, also this is a question uh, which Linia will answer you on our Discord, for example. Um, but I can just give you that we use Discord for many things. I have used uh, GitHub for many things. And yeah, why not? Uh, I think this uh, is open for the community uh, how they how the people want to use it. So yeah, yeah. Um, you can yeah uh, work with GitHub and you can join the Discord and just talk to uh, Lauren and other de developers uh, uh, if you have any questions and stuff like this. And yeah, of course you can share those um, mods you create uh, on some our. Uh, on some way with other users. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes now, um, when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to the um, setup, um, mm -hmm. how would it would it be based on the based on the images that I've seen? Would it be fair of me to presume that the um, that when it comes to managing encounters, managing turn orders, and and the like, and um, dice rolls, mm -hmm. that is pl that is planned to be supported. Um, so you mean like uh, a rolling initiative, and uh, then you have a list of which one goes first and stuff like this, or and um, po and possibly um and po um, possibly rolling when it comes to damage or damage and or mm -hmm. effects. Is how, um, how far are you? How far are you going with it when it comes to that? I mean, we know, for example, Fantasy Grounds offers the uh, yeah function that you just can, yeah, like drag and draw your mm -hmm. weapon on a on an enemy, and it's uh, it's doing the math automatically. Um, this maybe will be something that we have running in Puzzle Search Gods in a few years of stuff it's it, it's so uh uh yeah it's it's pretty much you can uh, uh how uh, or uh, let me start again there are uh, so many ways how you could improve our tool and yeah we don't do those kind of things that uh, fantasy crown has so for example of course we have the normal uh, console uh which you can enter comments uh, comments and then roll a dice but uh, you will not be able to, um, yeah, just drag your item on an enemy and it do it, it's doing the role and the uh, the, the math, uh, mathematics uh, on its own. That's yeah, maybe a feature after the after everything else works and is uh, fine and people like it. Um, then maybe we think about adding things like this. But for now, it's a little yeah futuristic for our tool. Uh, I hope this is, makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> uh, what I just said. And when it when it comes to now, when it comes to the amount, when it comes to the amount of um, cre when it comes to the um, art for creatures, 
and for uh, PCs, I'm curious how I'm curious how many different um, how many different assets would you say that you're shooting for when it comes to PCs and when it comes to monsters? Um, well, our concept artist uh, is pretty pretty good in uh, creating those little uh, pixel artworks. Um, so I think uh, we can prepare very much, very many of those uh, pixel artworks. Um, for example, we want uh, all the monsters in the OGL. Um, if we make it um, for the ver first version of Pass of Edge Gods, mm -hmm. so um, yeah, all the SRD OGL monsters will be uh, available as assets. And when it comes to uh, NPCs, we yeah, I think there will be like 50 to 100 at least, but mm -hmm. uh, maybe even more. And of course, NPCs and characters uh, at some point, uh, yeah, uh, are the same thing. Or you can use the same model for different things. So yeah, um, also for the players, um, we plan on uh, yeah doing like ten, maybe twenty for the free player version, so that you can yeah play and have some uh, assets. Uh, and yeah, uh, because it this whole player thing it's just optionally but we wanted to yeah create this but of course it's a ton of time a uh, really really a lot of time we need to to do like um creating servers where you can join your host uh your dungeon master with your mobile phone or something as a player and uh, stuff like this so of course we need some support uh, uh and finance uh, those things so we need this premium player version which allows uh, you to uh, yeah support us with uh, buying something and of, uh, also yeah then we want people that they have yeah more freedom and like they want to be appeared in the tool uh, with customized uh, icons and characters so you can just upload own icons and characters and um, you we want to prepare uh, many many different uh, additional skins. Uh, for backers only, of course, on Kickstarter, but also for um, yeah people that uh, don't back um, that want uh, later buy this uh, premium player version, so that they can choose of our um, assets we prepare. And yeah, uh, that's pr pretty much our plan when it comes to yeah assets and yeah um, the player thing with uh, player character models. So uh, yeah, and. That's, uh, I think, the plan. But of course, you also can, um, with the Dungeon Master version, you just can upload own um, sprites and own um, creatures and assets. So mm -hmm. um, also there, you are free to use a additional uh, yeah, assets. Yeah. Now, when it, now, um, when it, when it comes to... When it, when it, speaking of that, when it comes to the art, what was the what was the inspiration for going with this um, this pi this pixel this pixel based approach? That um, I will admit that when I first when I first saw it, I had internally joked about it and made some comparisons to um, stuff like Final Fantasy Tactics and Ogre Battle because mm -hmm. that that's where my mind immediately com comes to with this particular style more than anything else. Yeah, I must say um, I was not that familiar with um, this isometric 2D art style. Um, I, of course, I played games like Terraria or uh, Minecraft myself, mm -hmm. but it's uh, yeah, it's pixel style, but it's another style. So this isometric uh, top-down, kind of top-down um, uh, 2D art style, it came from Linear because he, he had some uh, asset packs bought that we can could use for the tool. And it pretty much is easy to yeah fit for this procedural generation so um you know generate worlds with those tiles so that's why uh, we yeah use those tiles and of course another point is um Lunard is a, a really really a huge fan of uh, games like minecraft uh, and uh, yeah how they all work and are generated he studied uh, procedural generation in on uni um, when he pretty was really really interested in game design and uh, game development already, and of course uh, things like Dwarf Fortress, if you know it, 
which oh, is yeah. a mod modded procedural generation. Uh, but I'm no expert in this points. Uh, but he loves all this stuff and he knows so so far uh, extremely much. Um, he's uh, yeah dealing with uh, procedural generation and Minecraft and stuff like this for um, five to ten years, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's kind of. Uh, one point why we uh, yeah started pixel art because he always loved it uh, uh, he loved it already and yeah you know mm -hmm. and I I um he pro well he prob he's probably at least familiar with the let with the infamous legend of boat murdered in that case since you brought up dwarf fortress. <laughs> Um, uh, I think he is, uh, but I, I sadly, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Um, now, when it comes to when it comes to uh, Dun when it comes to the whole la the whole layer thing with um dun with dungeons, mm -hmm. um, and I've I've dealt with my fair with my fair share of dungeons, but I've always the um the kind of dungeon that I've always been hesitant to run is the is the infamous mega dungeons, you know, like world's dark, world's um, largest dungeon, or get or God mm -hmm. help you, um, tomb of horrors, which is overrated by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes when it comes to when it comes to the idea of a, of doing a un, doing an underground dungeon system, um, do you have it? Do you, are you planning on having it set up where it's just one le where it's just one level, or if somebody wants to do multiple levels of dungeon, they can do that? Um, you mean like um, two or three levels uh, of dungeons, maybe uh, uh, below the ground? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's your question. Um, I think we start with one uh, level, but um, of course it's. Yeah, it can be evolved, uh, or how, how do you say? I think evolved is kind of a weird word uh, right here, um, but I, I use it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we evolve it at at, uh, at some point. There will maybe be two or three more uh, layers or stages uh, of dungeons uh, in the in the underground. But yeah, for the first, it's just this dungeon and cave system that uh, we are kind of can uh, exist all over the world in the underground. But also, you must say, uh, we want uh, to add points of interest uh, that are, have not necessarily something to do with those underground dungeons. So if there is a, a huge castle with an underground uh, yeah, dungeon system uh, of itself, it may be integrated in uh, this uh, underground cave and dungeon system, but it's, uh, yeah, Maybe a little of uh, a bit of a focus of the map, where you uh, have a really really cool dungeon underground, and maybe they are uh, for the first version, maybe even more layers or more stages in the ground, um, you know, like more stairs and stuff like this, uh, where when you can uh, duck, uh, dive deeper in the into these uh, dungeons, but of course on the uh, overworld also there are uh, buildings and. Uh, yeah, villas or uh, uh, mansions uh, is the word in English. Mansions and stuff like this, uh, which are, should be should, are supposed to be pretty cool and uh, interesting, mm -hmm. um, and kind of also be those dungeons or yeah, yeah, great points of interest with uh, many encounters and possibilities to do cool quests and cool stories mm -hmm. to yeah to create. Quests and stories. I mean, yeah. And when it comes now, you get now. Um, you guys are you guys are setting this up. You guys, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, are setting this up to work to um, work with bo work with both um, P with PC um, OS OS aside, um, tablet and mobile. Mm -hmm. Now. Because of the fact that one of the things that you have set up is be is being able to go from worldview and all the way into dungeon art, is, mm -hmm. do you have a um, do you have your own ser do you guys have your own server set up when it comes to housing all of that data? Um, I I must pass. Uh, I'm I don't I don't know any 
thing about servers. Uh, I'm no uh, developer. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But um, yeah, um, of course, we plan on having servers. I, I think I can give you that much. So that, um, of course, you have your own adventures, but then you create it and host it on the server mm -hmm. and uh, people will join it. Um, maybe it's like uh, civilizations or uh, games like this where you um, yeah, host it then online and people kind of join. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, you host it on your own, but uh, you're connected uh, through the server. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm no developer. Maybe there's nope. <laughs> some no logical worries, problems in there. Um, but uh, of course, yeah, you can imagine, uh, like in civilization, it will be here. Um, so let me tell uh, tell you how to how how this whole uh, player thing is supposed to work. In our opinion, the dungeon master creates and uh, edits uh, and manage the adventure. So he creates it and uh, yeah, prepare it uh, as long as he wants. And then when he's done with preparing. He can host it and players will join. And uh, it's still kind of the editor, editor thing uh, from the Dungeon Master. So on the fly, you can add and, and edit anything uh, that you also uh, could add, uh, edit before you hosted it. Mm -hmm. um, but for the players, it will be like uh, you join with your character. You have the specific character, maybe even two characters at one time uh, as one player. Um, because we already got that question. So you have a uh, feel of you, like in a real time strategy game, you have options like, um, yeah, moving your character or uh, when the dungeon master doesn't trust you because uh, he knows you're trolling much, uh, he just can disable the uh, move function for players or certain players and move the characters uh, uh, on his own. Mm. Um, so the players can ping on the map and say, hey, I want to go there. And the dungeon master drags and drop them there. And uh, yeah, the field of view will move uh, with the characters. So um, they see the new uh, area where they are uh, yeah. on this in this moment. So this kind of how this will work. But um, it is op op optionally. I mm. uh, will, uh, yeah. Uh, I must say this. Um, so if you don't want to use it wh when you uh, are in a live session on your uh, table, um, but of course you can join as a player with your mobile device, uh, so smartphone, tablet, or maybe even your notebook or laptop, or of course uh, desktop uh, PC, but uh, who wants to have his desktop PC when he is playing on a table? <laughs> uh, pen and paper. So you, yeah, you're completely uh, free uh, in, uh, when it comes to the playing setup um, with your devices. All right. That's. Uh, I hope I got your question. Yeah. Now, give now given all given all of that. Um, I know that I know that these kind of things are always going always going to be in flux, but. It, but in the um, pledges, it mentions waves when it comes to bait. When it comes to the betas, um, mm -hmm. are you planning on are you planning on doing a series of timed betas with the project? Um, wait, uh, pardon. Can you repeat your last sentence? Uh, um, the, the last the last sentence of your uh, question. Um, are you plan Are you planning on doing timed betas with the with the development? I.e., doing be doing betas for Eight for a given number of days, and then and then um put then taking the beta down for a bit, and then repeating the process. We um we haven't figured out how exactly this will work, but uh yeah, I think this is kind of the way um how it will work. So of course there will be this beta wave one, which is more like an alpha uh, version for uh, just the, greater, uh, the the highest tiers of uh, backers because uh, yeah uh, they cert most certainly know uh, it will be a pretty pretty bare uh, test version where many things are buggy and uh, don't work and you know so um, it's okay to share this very very f first test version with uh, those guys and also friends and ourselves so we test this and uh, when the first bugs are uh, yeah uh, are uh, found and uh, yeah uh, uh, how it's called fixed. Um, then we start uh, with the second wave of uh, beta users. Um, 
which includes a larger audience. And uh, yeah, then I, I think we focus on stuff like uh, how you can play uh, uh, together, uh, how you can host and how you can join your host uh, and stuff like this. Uh, we are dealing with the server issues. And when yeah, most of those things are done, so the, the really first version where we uh, could say, um, this is a version we really uh, want to say it's like the first final version that's the beta way free and uh yeah this version will be uh available for every um backer uh, even if you just buy the uh, um it's not buying uh if you just back the um pr player premium pledge you will get access to the dungeon master version of the beta um so you ca can just uh host and create uh, a beta way uh, three your um your adventure and other players can uh, for free even if they don't have any beta keys uh, join your adventure and uh, as players and so yeah you can test everything you want there and uh, of course there uh, might be a lot of bugs and uh, yeah that's that's the point where we want to fix those bugs but also have a, a working version of the game and after this beta we go into early access which means is uh, uh, you know we we want uh, it to call our uh, early access because um, there's so many things we want to add, so many features, maybe stretch goals that we have reached um, that will be added if the basic product is working and uh, is uh, yeah provided to the backers and the users and uh, yeah then the early uh, access will uh, appear and yeah uh, from that point we will implement and upgrade all features that players uh, need and we think are, uh, yeah, mm, how it's called, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> needed uh, on this point. And yeah, and yeah, at some point, maybe we even add this uh, mess thing uh, you asked me about earlier, uh, like in uh, Fantasy Grounds, where you just can drag and drop uh, some abilities or uh, attacks on a creature and it does the math for you on its own. Uh, this, yeah, will be added because, uh, uh, yeah, you know, it's so many things uh, that you could add to this tool and so many ways you can improve it. Mm -hmm. Now, when, now uh, I do. I do want to. I do want to take the time to wish you get to wish you guys the best of the best of luck on all of it, and to make sure that I don't jinx. There we go. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, but with um with all that with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the insanity at play here. <laughs> <laughs> and, Thank you very much for having me. And I'm glad any, that you asked me. Yeah, and anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often mm -hmm. say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> very good. Sehr gut. <laughs> How would you say in Germany? Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>